Uh, before you start your collateral, you'll want to look at your mood board, obviously. And so if we bring up our mood board, which is something like this, <coughs> our Skynet controls the future. Uh, we want to find collateral that matches this, right? We're not going to put this on like a tote bag or like a t-shirt necessarily. We're going to find collateral that matches this and reinforces. The collateral is an opportunity to reinforce the brand, right? So we've got our final kind of letter form. And what we did as a class is kind of brainstorm different collateral that would make sense for this, right? Video game packaging, movie poster, space company, tech software, military tanks, action figures, graffiti, tag, tagging, that kind of stuff. So then you'll want to go out and find, um, find collateral uh, under the Canvas page. There's a series of links to mock-up sites. And so what we did, we went to one of these mock-up sites, we found this PSD graphics, and here is this sort of game cover DVD case that we're going to use as one of our collateral. And then another one of the collateral pieces we found was this, uh, this actual mock-up, which is a PSD. So the difference here is that this first part of the tutorial will be a single JPEG that you're just going to do a simple modification. And the second one is an actual mock-up, which is a layered Photoshop file. And we'll do that one second. So the first one we're going to do is just this one. And then I'm going to go to my artwork in Illustrator. And I've done more than just taken the letter. I've actually sort of taken that letter and then created almost kind of a pattern behind this. So it's not just the letter on a blank white background. And, you know, in fact, maybe I even want to like try something like this. I'll leave it back like that for now. One, so one thing I actually did here is I used a what we call uh, this mask. So I just created a new square, put it on top of everything, and then just selected everything and went to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. You can then copy this and paste it straight into Photoshop. So I'm going to go to edit, paste. After I copied it, paste as pixels. And you're going to kind of get it in place as much as you can, the right size approximately. You don't want it too small like this or squashed or stretched or anything. So just make sure it's large enough, kind of in the general position, and then you hit return. And then I'm going to hold down the command key. And I'm going to grab these. What it allows me to do is grab these corners and. M manipulate them individually. And I can kind of move this almost like it's in perspective. And set that once you're ready to set, you can hit OK. And then, so that's looking pretty good. I could try to go add in shadows and things like that, but for now, let's just leave it. Let's do the same thing again with that second one. We're going to paste underneath. And we're going to get a basic location, hit return. And we're, then we're going to kind of paste, use our command key again, and get these edges working in the right way. <coughs> something about like that. Then we need to use a mask to mask it off, right? Because we want to see the other pieces. And so we're going to use our selection tool. And I'm going to make sure I'm selecting everything. Oh, 
only within that area. So now when I make my mask, I can draw into it with my paintbrush and draw out of it with my paintbrush using black and white. So if I use, oops, you can see what I get when I paint this way. So that's sort of the opposite. So what I need to do is actually flip this selection, go to select inverse, and now it'll select everything besides it. So I can go ahead and sort of paint this in. The benefit of the mask, of course, is that you can go ahead and go back to white if you mess something up and paint things back in. But let's go ahead and paint this out. <clears throat> I'm going to invert my selection again because I want to add that. It's pretty clean, but I need a, a little drop shadow. Um, so I'm going to go to select inverse. And I'm going to add a new layer. And I'll just make sure it's on black. And I can go in here and add a happy tree. Just kidding. Add a happy shadow. Like that and like that. Um, and then I can kind of control the opacity. Now I've gone too far with that little selection. So I can, I can go back and fix that actually by using the minus or holding down option and that will minus from this selection. So now when I paint my little drop shadow in, it will be relegated to that space. So I'm going to hit there, and then I'm going to hold down shift, actually, that I'll make a straight line. Hold down shift, and that will kind of allow you to do it. And then you can modify the, the um, transparency. Select, deselect, and that one's pretty good. Again, I'm not going to add any other shadows in. So that's part one.